Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. Today we're going to talk about 4.1, where we'll learn about Pythagorean theorems. We will first learn how to determine if a triangle is a right triangle given the side length. So what is Pythagorean theorem? In a right triangle, the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the length of the legs. There are some quite technical terms, very mathematical. So let's see what they actually mean. So here's a right triangle, and we indicate that by this corner that we can see there's a right angle right there. And that is the right angle. These two lines, the shorter lines that's next to the right angle, they are called legs. And we can use letter A and letter B to represent these two different legs. So that's why it says the square of the length of the legs. Now the arrow is pointing to the hypotenuse that we use letter C to represent. That is facing the right angle, and that is also the longest side in the right triangle. So we are saying A squared, which is this leg squared, plus this, the, other, the other leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. That is the Pythagorean theorem. We can also say the legs of the triangle form the right angle, and the hypotenuse is always the side across from the right angle. Now here are some little memes that might actually help you to remember the Pythagorean theorem. First one, you may be right, Pythagoras, but everybody is going to laugh if you call it hypotenuse. Well, he eventually still called it hypotenuse. And that word is actually similar to hypotenuse that you can see, oh, it's actually lying on the slope. And then we have the other two sides. So when given the side length of a triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find if the triangle is a right triangle. Now let's have a look at some steps and example. First, you are going to need to plug the numbers into the Pythagorean theorem. And the key is C has to be the biggest number. A and B, they don't quite matter. So when we have this example, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is find your C. So in this case, the longest side we have is 9, so that means my C has to be 9. In that case, my A is 1, and my B is 5. doesn't quite matter the order. A could be 1, B could be 5, or A could be 5, and B could be 1. The next, we are going to put inside the equator. The left side is 1 squared plus 5 squared, because A is 1 and B is 5. We're going to replace them. And the right side is 9 squared. I don't know if they're equal. I'm going to check that. That's what I, how we actually decide if it's the right triangle. The left side, 1 squared is 1, 5 squared is 25, and the right side, 9 squared is 81. We're going to check if they're the same. And apparently the left side is 26, and the right side is 81, which means this is the second step. We're going to simplify both sides to one number. So we have one number. Last step, if they are equal, then it is a right triangle. If they're not equal, then it's not a right triangle. So clearly, in this case, 26 is not the same as 81. So it's not a right triangle. And that's how we can decide, using the Pythagorean theorem. Now let's look at another example, same steps. Number one, plug the numbers into the equation, and C has to be the biggest side. We identify our C first, 10 is the longest, so C is 10. As for A and B, it doesn't quite matter, so I can say A is 9 and B is 6. Now we're gonna, I'm going to put in the equation. 9 squared plus 6 squared is the left side. I don't know if it equals to the right side, which is 10 squared. I'm going to calculate the left side. 81 plus 36. The right side is 100. Now the left side is 81 plus 36, which is 117. The right side is 100. I don't know if they're equal. And now I can see they are not equal, so again, not a right triangle. That's the second example. Now let's look at another example. Here are the steps again. Same thing. We are going to identify the longest side first. So our C is always the longest side, which in this case, it is 5. C is 5. As for A and B, I can just say A is 3. B is 4. Now I'm going to put it in. 3 squared plus 4 squared. That's on the left side. The right side is 5 squared. 
3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, the right side is 25. 9 plus 16, clearly it is 25, which actually equals to 25. Now we can confirm that actually equals, so it is a right triangle. That we, that's how we can use the side length to actually decide. Next, now we can actually have a look at how we can actually use some size to find which other side we don't know. So first step, we are going to label the side of the given triangle as A, B, and C. C is always the longest side. And then this example is already labeled, so I'm just going to label my A and my B. So my A is 6 squared plus 3 squared, which equals to, I don't know the C, so I'm going to keep C squared. So that is my second step. Plug the two numbers given to, uh, given to you into the Pythagorean theorem, which is the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm just replacing the a with 6 and replace the b with 3. And number 3, step 3, we're going to solve for the remaining variable. We're going to solve for that c squared. So the side is 36 plus 9 equals c squared, which means it's 45 equals c squared. In order to get rid of that square, we are going to square root both sides. So we have square root. And our answer is always actually going to be a positive because we're talking about distance. You can then type in your calculator square root of 45. We can round it, c equals 6.71. Don't forget a unit, centimeter. That is number four. Now example five. Same idea, we are going to set up, well, label A, B, C first. The longest side is C, because this is a right angle, so that has to be the C. As for the A and B, A is X and B is 24. So my A is X, so I'm going to put X square. My B is 24, so I'm going to put 24 square. My C is 25, so it's going to be 25 square on the right side. That is how I plug into Pythagorean theorem which is the second step. Now I'm going to do the third step, which is solve for the remaining variable. So I'm going to uh, find out whatever number I already know. x squared plus 576 equals 625. Since I want to solve for x squared, I'm going to subtract 576 on both sides. I got x squared equals 49. Now I need to square root both sides to actually solve for x. x equals since we are doing square root and we're talking about distance, remember we always just do the positive. So it's going to be 7. Don't forget the unit. What is mean? That is number 5. Now number 6. Same idea. First, label my A, B, C. C is already labeled. The other two just one is a, a, the other is a B. And step 2, plug into the Pythagorean theorem. So my A is 2 squared. My b is 5 squared, which equals to c squared. I'm trying to find my c. That's 4 plus 25 equals c squared, which is 29 equals c squared. In order to solve for c, I'm going to square root both sides. And if you have your calculator, that's going to give you c equals 5.39. Don't forget a unit, which is meter. Last one, example 7. This time the, sh the triangle looks slightly different, but doesn't change anything. We still label them. That's the right angle. It's facing, so that is our C. And the other two are A and B. I'm going to start plugging them in. That's my second step. A is 8, so 8 squared. B is X, so X squared. Equals C is 20, so 20 squared. I got 64 plus X squared equals 400. In order to solve it, I'm going to need to subtract 64 from both sides. So x squared is 336. Next, in order to solve that, I'm going to need to square root both sides. And if you type in your calculator, that's going to give you x equals 18.33. Don't forget your unit, centimeter. So that is my third step, which is solve. And last thing, always keep the positive. So Pythagorean theorem have a lot of use in real life. So for example, we can have uh, create some uh, some artwork, and also the snail's uh, shell actually looks like the Pythagorean theorem. 
and that is another art piece. And we the baseball field actually is a diamond shape, which actually use the Pythagorean theorem to actually decide the, the length. And also when we actually define a TV, when we say, oh, that's a 55 inch TV, it's talking about the diagonal, which actually came from, it's not these side length, it's actually the diagonal, that's 55 inches. A bridge, if you want to actually create, build a bridge, you need to actually find out how to make these arcs, and that part uses Pythagorean theorem as well. And if you have a chord bridge, same thing, you need to decide how long each chord is, that's Pythagorean theorem. Next, when you try to build a house and you are deciding how much I need to actually make this roof, same thing, the structure is like that and you are deciding how long you would need, that would require Pythagorean theorem. And the pyramid, that's Pythagorean theorem. When you actually build stairs in your house, you're gonna need to decide, oh, how high do I need to actually get to the second level? And you're gonna need to see the ground length and how high you're gonna get. And that's how you decide how much wood you would need for that piece. That is everything for 4.1. Thank you.